Hi guys, thanks for tuning in to another video episode on ForgottenWeapons.com. I'm Ian, we have a very interesting old pistol to show you today. This is a bigot, at least that's the code name that the OSS gave this particular modification to the 1911. The idea here, these were developed in World War II, and I believe they were intended to be used to shoot sentries very quietly. Um, why exactly they would do this instead of a silencer, I'm not entirely sure, but you do see these uh, referenced in books about World War II uh, clandestine equipment. Uh, again, the code name for the, the device is the Bigot, uh, and it's a modification to an otherwise stock standard 1911 pistol. And the idea is it shoots this rather nasty looking finned dart. So the main part of the, the main functional part of the bigot is this modification. This is the device itself, basically. And this goes into the barrel of the gun in two parts. The front. This piston is what the dart rides on. Then we have this rear piece that sits in the chamber of the 1911 barrel. It's shaped here at the back to fit nicely in and then the center piston threads into it. So you put this in through the, the ejection port, and then you run this in through the barrel, thread it down, like so. Now the firing pin on this particular one has been stuck forward, I think because it was originally made with a very tight fit and it's fairly old and it hasn't been used. What would normally happen is we have this very long firing pin running the length of uh, this whole device and in the back here, you can see it's centered in there. So when you fire the pistol, the firing pin of the 1911 firing pin hits that. That pushes out the firing pin on the bigot device. And this dart actually has a basically a 25 caliber blank cartridge up here in the nose. So it slides in like this, firing pin hits here, transmits up to here, and then the bigot firing pin up here detonates this little blank cartridge. That produces a ton of gas pressure up here, which pushes this dart off of this rod and out down range. The fins are a second piece that slide smoothly on the dart body so that when you load this, you can load the dart all the way into the barrel and the fins sit up at the muzzle and when it fires the fins slide to the back. Well, let's go ahead and put this back together and it'll make a little more sense. So we take the two, co two components apart. Go ahead and drop this one. into my 1911 barrel. And then this piston comes in through the back. And threads in place, like so. There are a couple little grooves here so that you can actually get a, a, a nice solid grip on this. And then now if we look at this, you can see, you can see the rear end of this contraption. And what we want to do is put this exactly, there we go, it's a bit, little better with the flashlight there. You can see it slides nicely into the chamber. And we want to have it set just right so that the barrel will still close. If you don't have it rotated to exactly the right position, it'll lock the gun up. I think this is as good a time as any to point out that this was not ever a major production item. I'm not sure if these were actually ever even used. Um, 
So the fact that it's a really finicky, you might say outright bad idea, didn't stop them from making a couple. Now, this is a normal pistol. I have just added this piston and chamber device in there. And my firing is all pretty much contained in this dart. So what I would do is load a dart. There's a nice mechanical, fairly tight seal there. We'll drop the fins over the muzzle of the gun. And there we go. Now, I cock the gun and I can go about firing it. And when I fire it, it'll shoot that dart out. And should I want to fire a second time, all I have to do is put another dart in because the nose of the dart contains the blank cartridge that powers it. If I then need to revert this back to being a regular 45, all I have to do is unthread the piston, drop out the chamber component, and insert a magazine of 45 cartridges. And away you go. All right, so you might think it's cool enough that we have one of these bigot pistols. Well, not only do we have that, we have five different types of dart uh, for them. So this is the one that we were uh, looking at in the gun. And this is, I believe, the one that you normally see pictures of. Sliding fins, and the fins are notched to, to, go, to uh, give you some clearance around the muzzle of the gun. But we also have, for example, this one, smaller fins, same basic idea. And in this case, the front end is threaded so that you can take the tip off, presumably to load the, um, the blank cartridge. Whereas on the, the first style of dart, the blank is set from the factory. We also have a slightly different arrangement. Um, the tip on this is very much like the, the first one, but these fins are fixed in place here. So this dart only goes about halfway onto the muzzle. This only goes that deep on there. Why exactly this was done, I don't know. Um, may simply have been an experiment to see if uh, fins up in the midsection of the dart would work as well. There were also we have a, a test one here that has no fins at all. Sits all the way down. And the most interesting one, this guy. You'll notice the body of this dart is larger in diameter than any of the others. And if we look close here, the back end of this is actually pre-rifled to match a 45 1911 barrel. So with this guy, and this is just really cool, this fits right in the muzzle. And what I do is you rotate it and it will actually fit the rifling. It's a lot tougher to load. It's slow. But it will just follow the rifling and slowly rotate as you load it from the muzzle. Then when you fire it, obviously, the rifling spins it back out. And in theory, at least, you have a nice, accurate projectile. We'd love to find some testing data on these to find out what style they ended up finding to be the most useful, most effective. But I'm not sure we're ever going to find that kind of documentation. But we're always looking. All right, and in case that wasn't enough for you, we have any James Bond types out there. We also have grenades, because what's a pistol if you can't shoot a grenade off of it? This is the exact same idea. We have a tube that fits down the barrel. We have a blank case in the bottom. Slide it on. This is actually very similar to a rifle grenade, and sort of given that it has a blank cartridge in there. We've got two different sizes here, a big one, and a little dinky one. How's that for cool? So we have no idea what the history of these guys is, um, whether these were actually ever used, if they were purely experimental. Um, for all I know, these may have been handmade by someone who got their hands on one of these pistols and thought it'd be neat to do, which it totally is. So these were, like I said, developed by the OSS, the Office of Strategic Services during World War II. Uh, I have no idea if they were actually ever used. Uh, we're very lucky to find 
an actual example of one to take a look at and show you guys. So I hope you enjoyed this. I know I did. Tune in again for more interesting gun stuff on ForgottenWeapons.com. Thanks for watching.